10x health, 10x everything. Let's go, man. <laughs> Shit, right? You got me figured out, man. God damn. Is that how you get a TV show? You just got, you got to be a good reader. You got to be a good reader of people. Oh, no, I just got lucky. Yeah, Did you? Man. Hey, hey, the good reader of people is the fact that I, I, I still um, have shot so many episodes and then had so many different shows. And somehow at 47 are still on MTV. When you swore at 38, I ain't going to be on MTV when I'm 40. Dude, that's and, crazy. Yeah. So look, look, like, how, how do you, how did, how did you get that first show? Uh, you know, the, the first show that I wrote, um, I wrote a skit for a skateboard video, right? So the DC Shoes skate video was my footwear sponsor. I had a signature shoe for DC Shoes when I was a professional skateboarder. And I wrote this concept of like, when I go out to skate in the streets, that security guards always kick me out, but I'm going to bring my own security guard. And that's when I like met Big Black and brought him with me to when I would go and skate places. And then um, really that blew up in skateboarding. And then Jeff Tremaine, who did Jackass, was like, man, you guys should do a television show. And that's really what led to developing. So, so were you thinking TV before this or were you just thinking marketing? Yeah, no, I, that was just marketing for my skate career, yeah. right? Because there was yeah, so yeah. much pressure on my video part, and I wasn't as good as everybody else. So I wrote this really creative skit that became the biggest thing in the video because everybody it's everybody's dream to have their own security guard to deal with security guards when you go skate in the streets. And then it just blew up. And then even when they initially asked me, like, man, you should do a TV show. I'm like, man, I don't have time to do a TV show. Like I'm doing all this, you know, cause I was still working on all my other business stuff and everything that I was doing besides that. And, and then I said, all right, let's take a shot at it. And then I had to learn TV, you know? So man, let me ask you, so how big, like when you're, when you're talking to an entrepreneur or somebody trying to start up or a business owner, how important is in your mind is marketing to, to the, to the overall energy and the resources and the think of the executive. In, in what sense? You saying like well, when you're where, talking where, about- where would you rate marketing? Like if there was a priority of five or six things to do, yeah. What what number would you give marketing in its priority? I, look, I look when I you got it like to, to give you further context, it's like um, you know, the way that I look at building businesses, I look at businesses through the seven core capabilities. It's brand, it's product, mm. it's media marketing, sales, operation, finance, leadership, right? That's how you build a business in a holistic fashion. So when I look at building a company, you know, I'm, I'm evaluating someone's skill set and general knowledge in all aspects of the seven core capabilities. Now, the problem is, is you'll have a great marketer, credible, great, amazing storyteller that does not how to understand how to develop products, certainly doesn't know how to operate a business and does, is not making any decisions through the lens of the financial viability of the opportunity. So a great marketer can actually be a big hindrance when you're creating a business um, if you don't have the rest of the, the business fully balanced out, you know, but, but again, you're playing the same game. The marketing is where your awareness comes from. Your awareness is where the demand creation comes from. That's how you build a business. You've got to do it. But if you got a business with bad unit economics and a small market, uh, yeah. you're just never going to have a great business, right? So yeah, I, I tend to look at about, everything holistically. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about it. Yeah, but you're talking really smart. You're like, you're, you just hit genius IQ level right there, man. Like, right. I don't know if they show that part of you on MTV, but but I oh, they don't. You. Probably not. Yeah. So, so, so you just moved into the scaling now. You just went from, just so the audience understands what you just said, hey, the marketing piece, operations piece, the manufacturing, and then does the business even scale? When you're looking at, if you were 25 years old today, you're looking at an opportunity, how important would you be prioritizing whether this thing, whether this thing can even scale and become something big? Yeah, and look, and scale's relative. Right. What I implore every entrepreneur to think about is what do you want your life to look like? What's the vision for your life? And then how does your business idea integrate into that? Because, look, I can tell you, you can live an extraordinary life with a business that does five million dollars in revenue that kicks off two and a half million in profit. You know what I mean? Like it, it all becomes relative. Wait, how do you how do you you got to explain that to me, man? I hadn't figured out how to live an extraordinary life with, with, with under those conditions. 
Well, look, it's it's relative, right? For you, it's not because you got to get your jet, yeah. you got to get your helicopter. I need cash flow, baby. I need cash flow. And it's like, you know, for for me, it's relative to who you are. So, you know, when I I I make an insane amount of money, right? Both in long term capital gains, ordinary income, and of course, my wonderfully fully depreciated multifamily buildings that I own, right? Yeah, you love now. Those. You know, and so to, uh, again, it's it's all sort of relative to my lifestyle, right? So I like to li- keep my lifestyle and how I live within the range of my cash flowing real estate, right? Mm-hmm. And I like to keep, and you're not going to like to hear this, I like to keep five years of cash on me at all times that's uh-huh. on those expenses, because what that does is gives me incredible peace of mind and harmony in my life. And it doesn't matter how much money I make, I try to stay within that formula, you know? And so for me, that was the the way I designed my life. And that's what's allowed me to live an extraordinary life in my version. So when I go back to that 5 million kicking off two and a half million, if you live in Idaho and your dream is to have a $1.8 million, 6,000 square foot house in the nicest neighborhood, having, having a ordinary income of two and a half million dollars and paying 1.3 in taxes, getting some write-offs and ending up a lifestyle that you can live a very nice lifestyle for a million plus dollars a year, that could be someone else's dream come true, but it's relative to your ambition, your identity, and ultimately what you want to do, you know? And so, so Rob, and that's a great point. I totally 100% agree with you. What, uh, when, when did you start developing your, your mindset about money so that you could get these different, um, number one, an understanding and number two, you could start crafting the lifestyle you wanted. I mean, I really, I, I was lost and confused in 2012. Mm -hmm. because boy, I was so ambitious. I had started multiple companies and multiple I have professional skateboarding leave and multiple shows on television. I had all this signature product and all these mega endorsement deal, making millions of dollars, starting thing after thing, hoping that one of these was going to be big enough that it became, it defined me. And then I would find happiness and balance and peace. Right. And, and I, but what I realized in that process is like you're you're it's never going to work and i read a business book called start at the end and this idea of whenever you build a company decide what you want the final outcome to be and build the plan backwards right. and then i realized i need to do that with my life mm-hmm. and then part of that was getting a real understanding of i just i didn't understand money right like i actually tony robbins reached out to me to help him promote money master the game and when i read money master the game it was like i didn't it it like completely opened my mind because i realized I just always made a ton of money, right? But never really asked, like, what do you really want out of money? And I realized it's like, man, I love this lifestyle that I live. And then what's what puts pressure on me is when I, I invest, I high risk, do all these ventures, get real thin on cash. And then boom, like, and then now I'm in this super dangerous spot. And then like, okay, another season gets picked up. Oh, you got another show. Like you're just in this constant battle for it. Right. And that's what really led me to why I ended up doing a ton of multifamily is that cash flow baby is i really really like the stability of the cash flow and to balance out the high risk side that i was doing on my venture and business development all of which was built around the identity that I've created for myself as it re- related to the lifestyle that I led the cars I drive the houses that I live in like you know I I I did a deep evaluation of that and then built a plan on how I could build a sustainable cash flow system that then I could begin to scale my lifestyle based off of that right so so how did you how did you start taking money from I guess uh, the TV shows, uh, the skateboard career, uh, the other the other businesses that you had going on. How did you allocate or think with how much money you were going to move to multifamily as an investment? Where that money's gone, uh, you know, you, you can't go access it today. It's not. Yeah. Liquid. Well, look, look. Hey, I'll I'll go a step further. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I I do the syndications where I'll never touch that money again, right? Because I ten thirty one every single one of mine, right? Like, uh-huh. and so it's like you know, 
you know, I'm essentially married to this group that I'm 1031 in this till, till, till the very end. So that can defer off into my estate. Right. As you know, yeah, So you're just, you're just, you're just trying to get that dependable, indestructible cash flow to offset the risk you take in your career working Correct. either in television or skateboarding where you can get hurt. Correct. Television where you can get cut. Correct. Or a business that can get dis disrupted. Yeah. And, and again, though, like the same way that you love the stability of it, I look at my whole life as the same thing. I run my life as stable as your multifamily cash flow. Right. And, and, and I run it probably a, a, a level deeper. Right. Where I wouldn't put money in, in, a, in a building that's not fully integrated. Right. I wouldn't go out and buy the building and, and leverage against it because I don't have time. Right. I wouldn't I would never invest in a building beyond 65 percent leverage. Right. Like I'm. Uh, love fully integrated like management teams because you have you, there's a nuance of how to operate great product and and really I want an operator that has 95 percent of their net worth in the in the deals and that uh, because you know great multifamily operators can't think of anywhere else to put their money uh, you know what I mean and then ultimately I want somebody that that has the experience that ran through uh, the crisis. And I want to know ultimately what was your, uh, you know, what was your, what percentage of delinquencies did you have in the pandemic? Because uh -huh. that's going to show me what type of operator you are and ultimately um, the, the quality of product that you have. Right. So again, deep. But then when you think about that on the level of like your existence, I'm even the way I build businesses, right? Like I co-find these businesses and I fund them from, you know, a million to $10 million because I'm trying to have as much equity at, at maturity because I want to build and sell a business for two, 300, 400 million and have, you know, between 50 and 70% of it. You know what I mean? Like that's sort of the game that I play on that side. And then as it relates to even how I build television, you got to think that I shoot 252 episodes so the television a year, but I have it so optimized that it doesn't compromise my lifestyle. It's 4% of my total time. Right. Wow. And wow. so it, it's, I allow, and, but that's ordinary income, right? So when wow. I build and sell a company for 200 million, I get the long-term capital gains, uh, still a painful tax bill, but, um, not nearly as painful as, as what it feels like to get eaten alive on ordinary income in the state of California. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's a, a, I look at it all, you know, I almost look at my entire life as like a time and energy P and L right. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately um, I look at all aspects of my existence of how am I making money? Where's that money coming from? How is that money going to be taxed? Cause ultimately at the end of the day, it's, all of it ladders together to time, energy, and effort, you know, and, and when you push it all the way over to the buildings, I do nothing. It takes zero time and effort. All, it's only in the diligence of it. Then when you look at my television show, I've optimized it to a point where it takes up very little energy. Then the companies that I build, it goes from a lot of energy to less and less energy as they scale and mature and find product market fit, you know. So, Rob, like, like, what would you recommend to someone to map out? Because clearly you've created a lifestyle, right? Like, I keep hearing you talk not just about the money. You're not talking really about the money. You're talking about the money is funding a lifestyle. What would you suggest to someone about taking two or three days, a weekend, or whatever it takes yeah. to literally build out the ideal life, the money necessary, what kind of money? Because you're talking about different kinds of money earned income, right. investment income. You're talking about passive income. 99% of people, I don't even know if they understand the terms, much less take the time to do it. What would you tell somebody about that? Yeah. I mean, look, you got to, you know, and this is why I think, you know, I, when I think about you, you know, just, you know, wearing a cash flow hat, uh, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, now, now you get to 10, you know, I just think cash flow back. Yeah, I, got uh, that one. I got that one around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you're beginning to like your, your message is, Hey, this passive income, like if you can get the, to the point where your passive income covers your lifestyle, you're free. Yeah. You're yeah. truly free. 
right? And, and, and your risk is mitigated depending on where, where you put that capital and where that cash flow is gener- generated from is, is what you, you drive to people of like how you can be, you can deliver that for them ultimately, right? And so when I think about life, right, you, you basically end up with these core systems that need harmony, right? It's your health, it's your mental health, it's your financial health, it's your career health, your relationships health, and your adventure and lifestyle health. These are the six core systems that, that integrate and make up your life and how those systems uh, operate together in a harmonious way is the quality of your life, right? And so you first simply just ask, what would be, what would be ideal of my health? Well, how would I feel on a daily basis? Um, and then it's like, okay, if I was perfectly healthy, what would I feel like? What would I look like? Then it's like, what do I need to do to get there? You can right. name, there's right. five things you need to do to get there. The first one you got to know you can do, that's your first goal, right? And if you do the same thing with like your sort of mental health and and sort of the way that you actually feel like you just do the same thing. How would I be feeling if I was a make is really you're going to start thinking, well, I would feel way better if I was healthier. Oh, if I had this much money saved, well, that'd make me feel way better. If I had the job that I wanted and was making the money that I wanted, that's what would make me feel better. Right. So there's this qualitative assessment. Dude, John, Johnny to. Depp needs you, bro. Look. Look, Johnny Depp's system is this, you know what right. I'm saying? But, but again, but it's all of these different systems need harmony. And then you, and then here's what you're bound by. You are bound by time, energy, and capacity, right? You got the same 24 hours a day that you've got to design to make them efficiently, but you also um, need balance in all those those six core uh, systems of your life in order uh, to create a happy, fulfilling life because everything that you're doing today uh, is basically a result of what you've done in the past, Right. Like what you're experiencing today is because of all the decisions that led up to today. Right. And more often than not, we have so much dysfunction in our existence that we try to get healthy for a little bit. We try to save for a little bit like we oh, we're going to go get that new job type of thing rather than looking at everything, building a plan for all of it. And then patiently now evolving and growing towards your ideal life, because the truth is, you know, I say. Start at the end, but I say start at the end again, 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 and again. It's like who I am today is so different than who I was two years ago. Right. Right. And completely not even the same human being uh, two years before that. And when I built this master plan and launched it in 2016, who I became in six years is so mind numbing. Like I couldn't Me, even meaning fathom. What, Rob, mean, meaning that, that, that you're actually further ahead than you thought you would be six years ago. But, but it's, here's the difference. It's not about being farther ahead. Six years ago, here was the goal. What I didn't realize is you expand into life. Uh-huh. Right. So like the depth of your knowledge, your understanding and who you are, you thought you were going right here, but you're actually right here. That's uh-huh. like you expand uh-huh. into life and, right. and you evolve and grow and learn more. You get more intuitive. You have clearer plans. Your, your vision for who you are continues to evolve and get clearer as you learn more and evolve. Right. That's the thing that I think people just underestimate. Well, is, I, I hey, don't think you can know Rob until you do it. Yeah. Like what you're, what you're saying to people, is, I, I don't believe is really real. Like until you, you know, where I'm trying to get is so important to me in that moment, like thinking yeah. about something else over here. And I think what I'm hearing you say is there's a lot of wide benefits to making this journey. Like I always say that it's going to be harder than you think it's it's going to be. I don't know if you agree with this, but it's going to be way better than you believe too, if, if you do the work and you're patient. Yeah. And, and look, and, and to me, where, where you don't, you only quit if you lose belief, right? Mm. And you only lose belief when you're not progressing towards the fir- the milestone that's going to eventually get you there, right? So as long as you're getting continually seeking clarity and, and building your plan and refining your plan as you learn more and as you evolve, you can be patient. You can have patience with purpose when you have a better understanding of where you're going. And even it's, if it's incrementally evolving and growing towards your goal, you're still going to believe it's possible. You're 
still going to have faith and you're going to still keep pushing through the hard times. You cannot have patience when you have no idea where you're headed. When you're just hoping you get there yeah. uh, and wishing you're going to get there, it's super easy to lose belief because you don't actually believe that you're making progress towards getting there in the first place. And, and, and Rob, how important do you think it is? By the way, I'm, I'm texting my guy right now. I'm like, this guy should be a motivational speaker. He yeah. should be a coach. He should be a business coach. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I definitely want you on our 10X Growth Conference stage at some point. Dude, this is awesome content. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 you're inspiring me. Um, let me see if I remember the question I was going to ask you right here. How, how important, okay, is on this journey is having the right people around you? And, and does that include the old people or do, do some of those ha people have to be put off for a second? Yeah. And look, I, I like to equate this back to energy, right? Like, you know, at, at the end of the day, like you're... And, and, and keep in mind, let, let me just say this back to people. What are people for, right? People are for scaling your capacity, right? It, it's like the, the reality of it is when it's just you, you have a limited amount of time, energy, and capacity by which you can execute. So the first thing that you're going to do is, and here's how you gain capacity. You either automate it or you hire. So uh, what, what a lot of people end up doing is, is they haven't learned enough or, or evolved enough, and they, they, they bring somebody on that they think can help them, but they weren't able to evaluate. And sometimes you bring on that person who's super smart, super capable, but they just aren't what you actually need to be able to scale your capacity. They actually pull capacity from you because now you're micromanaging and needing to deal with them, right? So again, I'm finding great people, but also being a great um, visionary and your ability to assess what you actually need and then hiring the right great people is when you can actually scale uh, efficiently and gain back capacity and, and reach further towards what you're trying to do. I just lost your audio, Rob. Yeah, did you lose me? Yeah, there you go. I got, I got you again. I don't even know where that would even came from. It said my I don't know something something you were saying. The world doesn't want 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 to hear that or something. I don't know. Yeah, we don't want to get too deep into my look. Look, Grant, it's no, funny. It's good, dude. Like, this is good. No, this no. Let me real. let me tell you something. It's funny because yeah. like you know, it's like I'm. It's always funny when I I people that I admire and kind of watch from from the side. You know what I mean? And and then I know when I would connect and speak with you that you would have no idea at the at the level that I that I operate right. And it's always it's always fun and interesting, but I but I it's fun for me too because I I I get to see and I always assess how you operate your existence through sort of my philosophy and how I operate my existence through just seeing through your content and kind of of how you speak and how you talk, you know what I'm saying? So it's always like it's always great for me to you know have these conversations for the first time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So so let me ask you. Um... How important is your celebrity? Like if you gave your celebrity a, a, a ranking, how important has that been to you a, a attracting great people and you attracting great opportunities? I mean, look, as you know, a celebrity is a double-edged uh, sword. You know what I mean? A gift and a curse. It can open a door, but what you actually have to offer um, and actually what you are trying to achieve will, will dictate everything, right? So because you got to think about it the same way you know, for, for the most part, um, you know, the, the depth of how I actually operate and, you know, and the, and the reality of it is, is, is TV has just been this super unusual means to an end for me because it's, it's basically a cash flowing um, asset for me, you know, and keep in mind, I built and sold a production company that produced my show for 200 million and wow. still make wow. all of my own talent money on the side. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's, it, but it's what I'm most known for. Uh -huh. And then really, it's it's this sort of amplified version of my existence where I've created this this sort of great show that went through, you know, that became almost an annuity for a giant public company. Right. And and then it's what the world knows me as. But it doesn't serve me much as it's related to value other than opening a door and people feeling connected to me based off of seeing me on TV for so many years. Right. And and ultimately, you know, I don't go out and I'm not trying to be a television.
television guy. You know what I mean? I, I get offered television stuff all the time. I don't have time to do a television show, right? It's not about my long-term legacy or vision for my future. And so the particular celebrity that I have, I'd almost consider it kind of neutral. You don't know. Most people don't realize I shoot 252 new episodes a year. They probably think that, like, is this a repeat? Did I already see this thing? Because right, MTV, right. it's 60% of their network and, you know, attributes nearly, you know, like 100 and like 80 million in EBITDA to a public company, right? So what it actually serves is this sort of annuity and cash for a public company that's growing a streaming service. And then for me, it provides uh, uh, cash to continue to invest and build in, in my, my personal wealth and the companies that I create, right? So it, it serves sort of a different purpose, but I don't monetize it, right? Like I don't have endorsement deals as like the ridiculousness guy. I just don't do any of that stuff, right? So, and it kind of keeps my brand neutral because you have, you know, he's the MTV skater guy. It's like, kind of this nice neutral thing that that I'm not I don't it's not risky for me to shoot 252 episodes a year no one even knows it's not risky for me that I'm gonna shoot another you know 1500 over the next five years right like because That's nobody insane. really that nobody cares but it's also this beautiful stable um you know essential cash, even though it's ordinary income, that yeah. allows me to continue to invest in my system with more security and more scale, right? I'm willing to put 10 million into a business because I've been able to generate and build um, the foundation of wealth at, at such and got better and better at assessing risk on the venture side on where and how I'm willing to uh, invest much larger sums uh, of money based off of how I've uh, optimized over time the quality of entrepreneurs and ideas that I'm willing to invest in because I've reduced the risk both in personal mastery of understanding how to do it really well and then the systems I've put in place of what I implement when I go through the process of actually curating an individual idea and building a company. If you were starting over today and, and you were uh, didn't have the, the shows, didn't have the skateboard career, Maybe you got a little bit of money and you want to be an entrepreneur. Would you start a business from scratch or would you look to buy a business that's existing and somebody wants to sell and take that over? I mean, look, I think assuming you could find the same business in, in something that you yeah. wanted. Yeah. And, and look, and I, and I, and I think it, it, it's, it boils down to this idea of like, what's the right fit for you? Right. Yeah. Like, and, and to me, it's, it's so hard. And when you're young and trying to be an entrepreneur, what do you got to do? You've got to burn through the fire. You've got you're, it's forget about, it's not about what it's not about not knowing. It's like you have no clue how how insane like building a company actually is because you just look at like how cool the product is and how great it would be to be a successful entrepreneur, right? Like yeah. you don't have any clue. Even even really educated MBA, really smart uh, people that have been that at least have learned the foundation still get burned by the fire, right? And got to go through multiple cycles a lot of times before they find success. I quit high school. You know what I'm saying? Like all the companies that I started and everything that I did when I was young, it was like, I was marketing over everything. I got to put it on TV. You know, even when I did Fantasy Factory, I saw you know, what was happening to all the companies that I owned from Rob and Big. When I did Fantasy Factory, I did a deal to own my integration rights. I, I use it as a platform to launch multiple businesses. I did deals with Microsoft, uh, Chevy. I did, I, I uh, DC Monster, all these things. I made wow. millions off of owning MTV's platform because I said I wouldn't do the deal unless you gave me the integration rights. And this is before they put a stop to that, right? I was right, right ahead of the curve. And so, I was able to monetize it, but again, marketing, 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 it wasn't creating value yeah. and then building something that was acquirable. So, right? so what would you do? Like if you had to pick, yeah. Okay. Would you buy a business or would you start one from scratch? If you had to answer one way or the other, yeah, I, I would start one from scratch. I would, would, I, huh? would I would go back to, and, because and you trust scratch. yourself now. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, I mean, no different than, you know, you know, you know, you put me anywhere, I can make five million dollars, whatever the whatever the thing, whatever the yeah. But check yeah. it out, check it out. But that's not how you buy, that's not how you invest in real estate. In real estate, yeah. you're investing in something that's already been built, functioning yeah. as a business and cash flowing. Right. 
Right. No, it, it's look, it's I know it's hard. It's a hard. Hey, thing. No, it's so much deeper than that. That's why real estate is like, man, real estate has this beautiful framework of numbers. Right. That you, you got comps, you got price per unit. You got like you got all of these things that you cash can flow. You got cash flow. You know what I'm saying? And even though we're all getting squeezed right now uh, in, in these these, you know, how how whether or not you're going to be able to pull cash out in the next few years. Um, that, God bless. Probably. God bless inflation and just rents popping up out of nowhere because it was yeah. getting real tight. And then all of a sudden, oh, no, it's it's like we're back, you know, so uh, it's it's had this really interesting wave that's also been fruitful since 2010. That's that's the scary part about this era of multifamily is very little pressure um, on 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 the industry itself. A little bit in 15, you know, a little bit in in uh, pre-Trumper getting in there and they oh we're back in it right on the double bubble, and then it was like then pandemic was like oh this whole thing's coming apart, and then it's like okay where, where, where do you they, own most of your stuff? Where where are you invested? Mostly the Southwest, right? So okay. um, you know like and I try to stick with like, again fully integrated operators that are expertise in areas, right? So they yeah. they are they're they're more economies inside that, you know what I'm saying? But you know again as you know, man. I, for, you you love I was, real estate. I can tell I, I, you. I oh, real estate. Because it's like, and to me, if you want to build long-term sustainability, like sustained wealth, that's what you should start. You know what I mean? In, in yeah. your younger, younger days. And, and then, but, but for me, I'm still like, I, I'm just so creative and love the idea of like talking to somebody about an idea, then it yeah. becoming like a product that you hold in your hand. Then yeah. people are buying it. Then it's like, Oh, now we're selling it all over the world. Like, Oh, somebody wants to buy it. Right. It's like that, like that love that piece. for me, but boy, that's filled with like deep unknowns where real estate has your base. When you buy a piece of real estate, you just want to make sure your, your assessment is basically, can I weather a cycle? Exactly. That's basically what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you feel confident that you can weather a cycle that, you know, and, and to me, the buildings that I have could, could weather a 20, 27% uh, delinquency before they call cash. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like, to me, and then and that, you know, that hadn't happened since World War II. That's what I'm saying. And, but they were, you know, some, you know, at the height of the pandemic there, it was up in the thirties, depending on what type of product you had. Great operators were, you know, seven, eight, you know, but these sort of like, you know, at, areas that were like less product got hammered because it was like, oh, we don't have to pay rent. I guess we're not going to pay rent. Right. Like that, that type of zone. But, but again, you know, I, I think, you know, everybody that connects with with your your mission and 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 sort of vision for cash flow, baby, and growing equity over time. It's man, I wish I would have started doing this when I started making money when I was 21. Yeah, right? yeah because I, I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I didn't start doing it till I was, you know, late 30s, you know. Yeah. By the way, you look great at 48, dude. I hope I look as good as you when I'm 48. Hey, hey, look, we, we look the uh, same. Aren't we the same age? Aren't we the same age? So look, let me ask I, you one more question, Rob. Uh, but if anybody ever does a movie about me, I'm going to have them. I'm going to have Rob. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you. Oh, as, as, the energy. That's it. The energy. Um, what does the term 10X mean to you? Yeah, I mean, look, when I, you know, since, since it's been in the ethos for so long to me, and, and I think about like, you know, how it's, it's, you know, it started first with like, Hey, don't, don't think small. You know what I mean? Like think big that that's 10 X. And, and so to me, like, that's kind of this idea of what, when I, when I think of you and your ethos that you've created, it's this idea of think bigger, right? Like you, in order to get there, you've got to, uh, think big enough and then build a believable enough pathway there that you'll actually go out there and pursue it but you know when i think about you and your your push of like you know man it's assets under management baby i gotta get to a hundred billion in assets under management you know what i mean you're it's a i i was thinking the other day i'm like man i bet this guy wishes he was like 100x you know what I mean? Like he feels like he, 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 he kept it too light at 10 X and he's like, man, in my mind, I'm thinking hundred X now, 
Uh, you know what I mean? Cause you got to think when I look at, when I look at my venture side, that's a hundred X, right? right? How do right, I right, create, right. you know, hundred percent returns yeah. versus like on my real estate side. Hey, 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 if we get, if we have a nice run and we do some, uh, Doubles, you know, triples. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But really it's like, just keep me nice and steady uh, yeah, 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 is yeah. all that it is. But I, I do think 10 X is and what you've created ultimately is like, you know, think bigger to achieve bigger, you know? Yeah. And how, how important you think it is for people to think bigger? I mean, it's, it's. Should they, it's, should everybody think bigger? It is the only way for you to achieve the life that you desire. Mm -hmm. Right. And, 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 and you have to put it out there and put a stamp on it and begin to build the plan, even if it's unplausible to you. Well, I would need to get this in order to get there. Right. But at least if you start thinking that way, you the universe will start to conspire around you and things will begin to present themselves to you. New things are going to teach you and you're going to be like slowly being pulled towards it. But if you don't think big in the first place, you're right. it, it's just like anything else. Else. Like if you have no idea where you're going and you just start driving, you ain't ever going to get anywhere. But if you decide, I don't know how long it's going to take me to drive from Florida to California, but I, I know that it's if, if I just keep going from state to state to state, I'm eventually going to get there. That's sort of the, the mentality of how you've got to plant a flag and, and put a vision to what's possible and then force yourself to learn the pathway to get there. Dude, you're awesome, bro. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. Appreciate, appreciate your time. You. Appreciate we your generosity. Connect. Appreciate your intelligence. Mostly, I appreciate the fact that you're successful and that you're willing to share that with me and, and my friends. Appreciate it. Appreciate Let's do it. some more stuff together, all right? Okay, you be good now. Okay, brother. Appreciate you. All right, take care. Thanks, Rob.